Merry Christmas, lifers. This is it. Can you believe this? The last Sunday before Christmas. It seems like the year is just like, what happened? Where'd it go? Last time we met together was the second Sunday of March. No, actually the first Sunday of March. We had a smaller group the second Sunday. Uh, it just flown by. And then in two weeks, we'll be in 2021. Uh, we might welcome 2021, but I remember I welcomed 2020 and look the way it turned out. But you know, I just want to remind you that this is going to pass. It really will. When we think about the Christian story, the birth of our Lord and Savior, and then we thumb through the pages of the Bible and get to the end of that story, that we realize this is, this is a blip. It's significant. It's caused some pain. It's caused a tremendous amount of pain for those that have lost loved ones, but it's going to pass. And I just want to read to you this morning a couple of scriptures that might help us. And I'm going to talk about this on Sunday morning uh, in our message before Christmas time. Out of Psalm 24, the song of the King of Glory. So you want to tune in on Sunday and get this message. It will encourage you, it will lift your spirits, it will strengthen you, and hopefully it'll put all this stuff in some perspective for you. But let me read first out of Luke, and then I'm going to read out of Revelation 19. In the book of Luke, this is chapter 2, and uh, this is verse 21. It says, On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, Jesus. He was named Jesus, the, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written, the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves and two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. He went into the temple courts. When his parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. I mean, get that picture. You know, I've got a, a baby granddaughter. She's only five months old. And when it comes time to, to hold her, it's such a gentle thing. And, you know, Laura or Anthony will have her in their arms and I'll come over and I'll say, you know, can I hold her? And it's this gentle passing of the baby. And, you know, you're careful not to mishandle her or, or you know, heaven forbid, drop her. Or It's just such a gentle, soft, careful exchange. And I can picture Mary and Joseph coming into the temple. And there's this guy, Simeon, and says, can I hold him? Can I hold him? And Simeon had been a man of God who was promised of God that he would not die until his eyes saw the Savior. And when that little baby was brought, carried by man, God carried by a mother and a father, carrying him along, what submission, what, what dependence, what complete trust. They brought this child in, their loved one. And Simeon says, can I hold him? And he held him and he prayed and he acknowledged that he was the king, the one to bring glory to the Gentiles and the salvation of Israel. What an intimate, beautiful picture that is. But listen, let's not lose sight of who that baby is. Last week we talked about the crucifixion and how he would save his people. But let's take it one step further and find out who that baby is. And we, we learn about that in the book of the Revelation, chapter 19. This same baby, the one that Mary and Joseph brought in their arms and the one that Simeon said, can I hold him? Would you let me just hold him in my arms? This is that baby. So it's in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. It says, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. 
With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one but he himself knows. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with, with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's the baby. That little one that Mary carried in her arms and Joseph was carefully watching to protect them. And Simeon says, can I hold him? That baby grew and was crucified and rose again. And he's coming again one day. He is coming again. Some of our eyes might see that coming. Some of us may be with him when he comes again. The faithful and true, the one whose name is the word of God, the one who's, who's out of his mouth comes a sharp sword, the one whose name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that's the baby. And what's exciting about that is it says this is going to pass because that's going to happen. I wanna encourage you today, celebrate this Christmas, rejoice this Christmas, no matter how hard it is, no matter how tough it's been, no matter how much of a struggle you've gone through, no matter how discouraging and distressed life is, rejoice. Because there's a King of Kings and a Lord of Lords. He came as a baby, trusted man, to hold him, nurture him, teach him, feed him, change him. But that baby is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we're gonna see him one day in his glory. We have that story in advance. So let's praise him in advance. Let's rejoice in advance. Let's praise the king this Christmas time. The king of glory. Look forward to seeing you Sunday, lifers. Love you all.